Get some analysis now and insight from Asia analyst Gordon Chang, author of Nuclear Showdown, North Korea Takes on the World. He's in New York tonight. And from Jacksonville, Florida, retired Navy Admiral Robert Natter. He's a former commander of U.S. Atlantic Fleet. Gen Fleet, gentlemen, thank you for being here. Gordon, first, your assessment of what this means. Obviously, if this is all true, uh, it ratchets this up to a different level. Yeah, North Korea is assembling all the elements, and it's doing so very quickly to be able to land a nuke in the United States. They've got the range. They've been able to miniaturize the warhead. You know, reentry technology, they're probably a lot further along than most people think. Guidance is not there, but when you're, when you're uh, firing on New York, it doesn't really matter whether you hit 32nd Street or 125th Street. The problem here for the United States, though, is because the North Koreans are making such fast progress, margin for policy error is now very, very small. And we, I think, can no longer tolerate resolutions like we saw last Saturday that only go a half of the way to, stu to suffocating the North Korean regime. We need to be able to cripple that regime so that they will then go to the bargaining table with us at that point where they know that they have to give up their weapons. We've got to act very, very fast now. Admiral, last time you were on, we talked about the military option and how it's really an ugly option, uh, but it seems more and more in play tonight. U.S. intelligence officials telling the Washington Post uh, that North Korea may have 60 uh, nuclear weapons. U.S. officials I talked to say that's a high number, but it, nevertheless, if they're miniaturizing, it's a different game. Yes, Brad, I think that is a high number, uh, but one is too high. Uh, the problem we have here is with the bombast coming out of Kim Jong-un, uh, we can have an encounter at sea or in the air uh, that starts out as innocent and turns very quickly into uh, a military uh, conflict. Uh, you can assure, be assured that uh, any ships at sea or aircraft are going to have their fingers on a trigger with any encounter with the North Koreans. So this kind of bombast is not helping matters, and certainly uh, Kim Jong-un is not acting responsibly. Admiral, at this point, though, the military has run down a number of options probably presented to the president, uh, I would think, at this moment. The South Korean threat, the threat to Seoul from artillery, uh, has to be a big factor in that planning. It's a huge factor. Uh, and those are all conventional weapons that range Seoul, not to mention the uh, potential for nuclear weapons. This is very serious. Uh, not only is Seoul within range, but lots of uh, uh, Japan is within range as well. Gordon, take a listen to the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley, this morning on Fox and Friends. China came out and said to the international community, we're going to follow through on these sanctions and we want everyone else to do it as well. It's a new tone coming sure. from China. And we basically said enough talk. We're done. And you have the ability to c control 90% of their trade and you can't make excuses anymore. <laughs> to their credit, they stepped up. We did some heavy negotiations. We got them there. To Ambassador Haley's credit, she got a unanimous vote at the United Nations Security Council. Uh, is it a new tone from China, and are we seeing possibly the beginnings of leverage on North Korea? We could maybe see the beginnings of a change in China's attitude, but we don't really have the time to wait for Beijing because this could take decades. You know, the problem is, you know, you have a resolution on Saturday that cut off $1 billion out of $3 billion of their export income. And, and as Ambassador Haley said on Fox and Friends this morning, North Korea uses its export income not for its people, but for its weapons programs. So we're leaving $2 billion on the table for Kim Jong un to further improve his missile. And we're not even talking about the unofficial income, the illicit income that North Korea is earning from Iran, which is estimated to be two to three billion dollars a year. So we have made some progress and kudos to her for doing it. But unfortunately, we've got too long to go in this and we don't have very much time before the North Koreans are able to r mount a real thrist risk to the United States. Admiral, I want to put up a, a map, Pyongyang, to different U.S. cities and the possible threat from uh, now an ICBM, uh, maybe with a miniaturized nuclear weapon. How confident are you in our ability to shoot one of those down? 
I'm very confident that we have the systems that can do that. But the problem uh, arises that if you have to engage more than one, more than three, more than ten simultaneously, your problem becomes much more complicated and much more difficult. Look, the best way to uh, knock out a nuclear weapon is to knock it out before it's launched. Once you start getting into the business of a bullet hitting another bullet, uh, nothing is 100%. Last thing, I want you to both weigh in on the president, obviously, with some very aggressive rhetoric uh, firing back, if you will, this afternoon. Gordon, your thoughts on that? I would have used different words, but nonetheless, the president did something which is absolutely critical, and that is to introduce an element of deterrence in our relations with the North Koreans. And, and this really speaks of policy margins right now. You know, it would be better for him to have used as maybe more kind language, but on the problem is, we don't have that much more time. And I think the president needed to make an impression. He needed to make it fast. And I think that he did that. And Secretary Tillerson, obviously, Admiral, is still holding out the possibility of talks. Uh, but your thoughts on today's rhetoric? Well, today's rhetoric just ratchets everything up. I can assure you that our headquarters in uh, Hawaii, our headquarters on the peninsula, our uh, operating forces in the area, uh, have looked very closely at the specifics of having to attack should we be given the word to do so. This is not a drill. This is very serious, and China has to step up and help us put pressure on North Korea. Last thing, if you were to put a percentage on it tonight that we are engaged in some military action in North Korea, uh, Admiral, first to you. Well, the last time you asked me that question, I said it was below 50 percent for a nuclear engagement. I've got to say that it's uh, up around 60 to 75 percent, probably because of the uh, mistakes that can happen. Gordon? I think that we can avoid war and the use of force, but we're going to have to em em emphasize that message of deterrence. And that's going to be very difficult because Kim is going to use his arsenal to try to blackmail the United States to break the alliance with South Korea so that he can absorb the South Korean state. Um, so we're going to have to do all we possibly can to reassure the South Koreans and to make sure that Kim understands where we're coming from. Gordon Chang, Admiral Robert Natter, thank you tonight for your time.